Okay. Well, let's, let's change, let's change course for the second part of this. How has God shown up for you in your comparison issues? What has he done? What is he showing you? How have things changed for you? Well, for me, um, I am a worship leader and I am surrounded by teenagers and students all the time, which is hilarious because if you asked me a couple years ago, the most terrified place I would be, I would say in front of teenagers and students. And I didn't think that we could do that. But since my husband's a student pastor and we used to be in a worship band that traveled and now I am the worship leader for our student ministry with about 500 kiddos. I mean, every Wednesday I have to go, I have to face my fears of standing in front of teenagers because I realize when, when I'm around them, I'm comparing myself to them. And my friend, Erin Todd, you guys all know her and love her. She goes, Rachel, it is straight up ridiculous for you to compare yourself to a teenager. And I was like, you know, I really needed to hear that from you because you're right. Like they're 16, 17, 18, and I am 42, a mom of three. I mean, we are not the same. So, but every Wednesday, I still have to face that fear of rejection. It takes me back to my high school insecurities because, you know, high school is just all about appearances. Who am I friends with? What am I wearing? Who am I dating? You know, and so I, it's so funny, but God is like, he's like making me face those fears over and over and over every Wednesday. So like even today, this is Wednesday, the day that we're doing this tonight, I will walk in to our huge student ministry room. And before I do, um, the Lord has just taught me these things. Um, I heard a beautiful quote. I think it was by Leslie Schilling. She said, uh, my goal is to bless and not impress. And that kind of goes with the like, there you are instead of like, here I am. So I'll sit in my car and just take a deep breath, kind of do a transition from my day because I got I'm a mom of three girls and all the things. And I just breathe out and I'm like, Lord, I'm here tonight to bless and not impress. I do not need anything from these students. Like mm, I am here to try to show them you. And so when I walk in the room, if I literally am thinking about them rather than how does the shirt look? Do I look, do I look like I've got, they don't care. They're not evaluating me. They don't need, they'll say like, you're a mom. We don't even know what you wear. Like right. one of them said that I was like, you <laughs> are right. right. You know? <laughs> um, but I just get to go in there with that mentality. Um, remembering that they need from me to see a free woman walking in freedom with Christ, not someone who is obsessing about what I eat and weigh and wear. And so the, but the Lord has done that because if you would have talked to me even a year ago, I would have been stressing about what I was going to wear tonight, what I was going to look like on stage, because I tend to compare myself to people on stage and Heather, you yourself in the, com the comparison free life, talk about that in the very first thing you're mm -hmm. like, she was on stage and I, you were evaluating her. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's what people do if you're mm -hmm. on a stage. And so I was like, but now I go, it's okay because I am I'm learning to rest in Jesus, but it has taken just God and his power doing that in me. So there's no way I could have done that for mm -hmm. my own self. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about, well, two things. First of all, it's not Leslie Schilling's quote. I just want to make sure Rochelle Parham oh, gets credit okay. for oh, that. Yes, Leslie yes, Schilling yes. is okay. awesome, but Rochelle Parham wrote that. And that was a beautiful line, um, blessed, not impressed. So I just want to make Thank sure. Thank you Rochelle for correcting gets, that. I was reading too many for that. books at once. <laughs> but, um, but isn't it silly, right? Because it's an imaginary contest, right? Like you yes. kind of feel like someone in the crowd is comparing themselves to you, right? And the person in the crowd actually doesn't think the person on stage is comparing themselves to them. So it's like this just imaginary contest that you're trying to win and you never actually can win because it's not a yes. real contest, right? But but it continues like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Oh, it's so good, Rachel. And it just made me think too, like I was thinking back to my story and I, um, I was thinking about how and you say it in your um, comparison, comparison free life and that <clears throat> comparison is really an issue of the heart, right? And I feel like that really, really, I got to live through that because when I first came to you, I was in a very, very small body compared to, you know, compared to where I am now. And I'm doing quotes here um, because I think that's also such a danger, right? We we compare ourselves to who we used to be. We compare ourselves at different points in our life and we don't give ourselves grace for aging because because our culture doesn't. But that's a whole nother story. But for me, it was coming in with, with 
at the time, really what a cultural, more of what a cultural ideal body would be like, it didn't matter. I didn't, I was so miserable. It was never good enough. I, I kept, you know, meeting the goal and the goal would keep changing. And I kept pushing more and further and went further into an eating disorder. And um, so throughout this healing process of freedom, my body has changed. My body has changed significantly. And I remember realizing that like, as I gained freedom and as I started to walk in the love and just learning my identity in Christ, it was like, I was more miserable and comparing more when I was in that small body than I am now, you know, in a much larger body, not fitting the cultural idea. And like you said, Rachel, it is all an act, a grace, a love, a mercy of God. And I remember one time in particular, that was such a, 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 I think it was such a turning point for me. And it makes me think of your story too, Rachel, is I was supposed to be helping um, my kids. My son had a field trip and I was going to be chaperoning. And I've always loved to volunteer and I've always loved to be part of a school and be in their lives. And But it was always like, what do I wear? What do people think of me? I mean, it was about me, 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 me. I was always so wrapped up in all of that. And I remember um, I hadn't seen a lot of these teachers and people since my body had changed. So they had known me and seen me in a much smaller body. And now I was about to see them after a whole summer coming back to school. And I was terrified. What are they going to think? And Heather, you did an awesome podcast about that too, which was so good recently. Um, but like, what are they going to think? They're going to think less of me. And the comparison started to happen. Now I really, I'm, I'm not going to win at the comparison game. And it was such a beautiful moment because immediately I was able to see from, you know, reading your book and doing the work, like, oh my gosh, what if I just went and what if I just loved on them? What if I, what if I didn't think about me? What if I just went out and found someone to encourage, found someone to speak something kind over them? What if I went and loved on the kids? What if I just had fun? Like we were going hiking and I love to like hike and move. And so of course there I am thinking, well, I'm in a larger body now and my pants are really tight. And what if I'm hiking up the mountain and someone's lower than me and they have to look at me, you know? And it's like, that's where our minds go. And then it was such a gift to be able to say, oh my gosh, but God, like, it's not about me. More of you, less of me. And that became yeah. such a beautiful like mantra throughout my healing and it was such a shift when I just got down on my knees and I surrendered and I asked the Lord, like, God, who can I be a light to? What do you have for me? How can I serve you? How can I love? I went and I had the best time. I loved on people. I had this most beautiful conversation with my um, son's teacher who actually shared that she was struggling with comparison. Mm -hmm. She was feeling less than as a teacher. She was feeling like she wasn't measuring up. She was worried about what parents were thinking of her. Yeah. I got love on her I got to share with her the kids were so much fun like they all wanted to be in my group because I was just the fun mom having a blast <laughs> wouldn't have done any of that if I had stayed wrapped up in me mm -hmm. and I left feeling more joy and more peace and I realized that I went a whole like I don't know four or five hours and I didn't think about my body once mm -hmm. that was such that's a awesome yeah it was so good and again that's the Holy Spirit but it's like I wouldn't even have known to go to that and see, I wouldn't even have understood that there's a different way and there's a better way because unless I had, you know, done this work and walked this path. Yeah. So oh, I love it. Thanks for sharing that, Sarah. Yeah. It's Tim Keller, the freedom of self forgetfulness, Yeah, right? It's not self neglect, but you really do not have to walk around all the time thinking about yourself and how you compare to other people. Right. You just don't, you don't, I mean, a lot of us do, but you don't have to stay there. Yeah. Jack, what do you think? Jackie. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I <answer missed>. it. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think part of a big part of this journey for me has been just growing in honesty. Um, and mm -hmm. that honesty is with both myself and with other people. And, um, I can speak to so many different areas, but I, I think what, what comes to mind specifically is in in my marriage. I think when I have those days where let's I see a photo of myself and I'm like panicking, like, oh my goodness. And I think the honesty is just catching the feeling before it turns to, okay, I need to go on a diet, but catching like, oh, okay, let me get curious about this. What's going on? 
what am I feeling? I feel unsafe. Like that photo mm. makes me feel unsafe because I think being at that size is unsafe and I'm worried what my husband thinks of me. And I think recognizing that in like seeing that feeling and bringing that to God, like, wow, I feel really unsafe, God. Like I need you to come and help me with that. And then also being honest with my husband and saying, hey, I saw this photo of myself and I'm feeling really terrible and I need I need you to just like love on me today. And that takes a lot of humility because yeah. for a long time in our marriage, and we're not married that long, but it was like, I couldn't tell him things like that because I needed him to figure it out on his mm -hmm. own. Otherwise mm -hmm. I was too needy. I couldn't mm -hmm. ask for that kind of love that I needed and comfort yeah. that I needed. And so this honesty of being like, it's okay if I ask him for that. It's okay if I come to God with this, like just, it's okay. Um, and I think like, I think Rachel, you said earlier, like when you're like that with other people too, where you can just say something to them, that's so freeing to them to then share like, Hey, I feel that way too. Um, and it really helps yeah. us connect. Yeah. Helps my husband and I connect and helps me then connect to other women as well who struggle with the same things. Yeah. That's so good. That's so good. Well, C.S. Lewis says the moment friendship is born when it's when you share something, you say, oh, I thought it was just me. So that's the other interpretation of C.S. Yeah. Lewis. He said it much more eloquently than that. But yeah. Presley, yeah. what do you think? Um, so yeah, for me, I feel like it really clicked for me um, how to deal with my comparison issues and like obsessively working out and counting calories. I don't even have time for my family because I'm so busy counting my calories and God forbid they interrupt a workout because then I can't stand it. And then I'm going to be abusive. Um, so yeah, I think understanding the gospel more because like in, in previous podcasts and other things you had said, how your belief is really related to the struggles with your body image. And I, I didn't get that for a while, but it's like, then I try to remind myself like, yeah, if I'm, if I, am I really believing right now? Cause if I were really believing in Jesus and eternity, am I really going to be worried that my legs are cottage cheesy or, you know, whatever my arms are flappy or whatever, is that really going to be a huge issue? So, yeah, I think just understanding the gospel more for me and I've been praying for the Holy spirit to help me really embody and feel God's love and, work through feelings, like on both, both sides of the coin, like learning how to not obsessively count calories and also learning not to bury myself in a tub of ice cream every night. So, I mean, it's, it's hard with the black and white thinking to get out of that and find like, what does the Lord have for me? It's not about me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you brought up the black and white thinking at the end. Cause that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, like it's about finding grace, right? And in the 40 day body image workbook I talk about, like we don't need to live in the gray between the black and white. We need to live in the grace is one of the chapters in there. Like that's that's kind of what's missing in all of our comparison struggles. I mean, really that's what, I didn't realize this was going to be a commercial for the comparison free life book. <laughs> that sense has <laughs> kind of gone there. Um, but no, like that's- <laughs> That's what that book is about. I mean, when I when I was asked to write a book on comparison, I had people reaching out to me saying, okay, we're, we're doing better on body image. Thank you for compared to who. But we kind of thought compared to who was going to be about comparison. So now can you write a book on comparison? And I was like, like, what's the cure for comparison? I was like, sure. I have no idea what the cure for comparison is. <laughs> it's like, mm, okay, I don't know. Do I know the answer to that? <laughs> and, you know, as I just prayed about it and like, I really couldn't, I mean, I was trying to research, like I, I may have actually put into Google, what is the cure for comparison and found like just all this self-focused stuff. Like you can stop comparing when you just decide that you're good enough. And like you decide that no one else matters and it's just about you. And the only person you have to compare yourself to is you and you just have to be better than you were yesterday. And like all this just like self, 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 pride, pride, pride. And I was like, okay, I know that's not the answer. That cannot be the answer. And as I started digging into it, it's like, well, we compare because we idealize like that woman and objectify, like we talked about, like we idealize that thing she has or that body she has or that husband like marriage she has. Right. And when we idealize, we idolize. And so really we're stuck in comparison because of all these idols we've erected in our lives. 
And then really the only way to break free, like in addition to, you know, confessing and repenting of the idolatry is recognizing that every single thing that I have and am is a result of God's grace. Yeah. Right. And so my body is the way it is because of God's grace. And God doesn't love me more or less than her if she wears a size four and I am not close to that. Right. Like that's not. That's not a like relative spectrum where God's like, oh, I'm going to pour all of my love on her <laughs> because <laughs> she, you know, like it's, he has the same amount of great, tremendous grace for me. And then the other thing I was thinking about was just this reality of like in Philippians, we're told that Jesus emptied himself of his glory when he came, like he was equal to God, but when he came to earth, right, he could have come as like Mr. Amazing, I mean, he was Mr. Yeah. Amazing, but like physical appearance, you know, like he, he could have been a rock star where everyone wanted to look at him. Everyone wanted to be like him. Like he could have made himself really attractive in all these physical ways that our culture and even the cultures back then valued to some degree, right? It was different, but to some degree, like scripture tells us like back in the old Testament, that Saul was a good looking guy, right? And David was a good looking guy, right? Saul was big and yeah. strong. David was small, but that they were both good looking, right? So there was something like people were people and they noticed attractive people and admired attractive people, right? And Jesus could have done that and he didn't. And then yeah. it's like, who do I want to be like? Do I want to be like a Kardashian <laughs> or do I want to be like Jesus? Like, what am I trying to do? I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh my gosh, Heather. I love that. I'm so glad you brought up the grace. Cause I was like, my heart was just going there too, because that is such a I, I did not understand grace until I read the comparison free life. And I know I keep going back to that book, but I can't help it. It was my favorite. I love, I love all your stuff, but there was just so much healing and so much understanding I got from that. And I think that just the, even in this space now, we have to give ourselves and each other so much grace because the truth is like, our brains have been wired for so long to compare. And so yeah. I'd be lying if I said I still didn't go towards comparison. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to feel condemned or shameful for that, but I get to choose and I get to receive the grace of God and say, instead, when I go out into a room, instead of looking at people and comparing myself, I get to now say, can I just see them as just a person who's broken, who's living in a, a broken world, who struggles and suffers just like I do. Like, I have no idea what's going on behind the scenes and being able to, to connect with them. I can connect with people in a, such a more compassionate way now because I know what it's like to receive that grace and to feel it. Oh. And it's such a gift. Yeah. I think just understanding that and allowing and giving ourselves the grace as well through this process. Yeah, press. Yeah, I just, I feel like there's going to be a whole group of people listening to this podcast that are saying to themselves, well, I don't compare myself to other people. I compare myself to my old self and I just want to be better than my old self. So I'm wondering how like it, it applies to them because I know yeah. there's people thinking that. Yeah, well, I, I, know. Can... I, I was doing okay. that for sure. I was yeah. doing that. And I feel like the Lord now, you know how like the photo memories will pop up just, oh, today on this day, I'm like, I, I had to stop looking at those because I was oh, like, yeah. this is not bringing oh, up yeah. good feelings for me. I am envious of my own self. What's up with yeah. that? So yeah. I just turned those off. I'm like, I don't need to know that. You know, if I need to go back and find something, I will. But I, phone, you don't get to tell me that I get, you know, I have to compare every single day. But mm -hmm. I definitely still do that. Like it's still, I still tend towards that. And so I feel like the Lord is like, come on, come on. We're going to walk out and do yeah. something different. Yeah. Well, I think we objectify our old selves. Right. Like we, we just, I mean, yesterday was my 19th wedding anniversary and Aww. happy anniversary. I, thank you. I <laughs> hated my wedding pictures when they came back. Like my husband still remembers the fit I threw when like he, I had gone on a work trip and he had the wedding pictures in the car. When he picked me up at the airport, we had like a 45 minute drive from the airport home. And he's like, here's the wedding pictures. He was so excited about it because he had seen them first. And I am looking through them in the car like, oh, oh, it's awful. Oh, I mean, yeah. I threw up. 
bit and he did not understand. He was like, what is this about? Like, this is a really like negative attitude and all the things. And now I look at those wedding pictures and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful. Pictures, right? <laughs> really great wedding pictures. Yes. It's, it's like, but then I think about who that woman was at the time. Right. Like, so I could objective with this picture and be like, wow, I look so good then. But man, I was miserable. And we had marriage problems because of that attitude I had towards myself and all my body image issues. Right. Like, yeah. our marriage was not as good as it is today. Like, we, I mean, there were so many different layers of the ways that I was just really messed up inside. I mean, I was definitely in an eating disorder that I had no idea I was in all the things, but I was just in bondage. And so if I just look at that picture and say, wow, that, that woman was doing better. Like that's just objectification. That woman was 31 years old, <laughs> right? She, she had no clue about a lot of things that were really entangling and ensnaring her. And the woman I am today is different. Praise God. I mean, I think that's what we should be doing, right? We should be growing and changing and being different. And if we're always yeah. looking back saying, I wish I was, I wish I was, we're not going in the right direction. Right. I, I think yeah. I use this line in, in the 40 day body image workbook, but like we get so, I think culture tells us, don't let yourself go, make sure you don't let yourself go. Right. And so I think that sentiment in and of itself, let yourself go. It's like, okay, I have to stay the way I was. I have to wear the same size I wore in high yes. school and I can never change. I have to stay the way. But like, that is so unbiblical. You need to let yourself grow, right? You need to grow and change and become more like Jesus and walk out sanctification. And sanctification sometimes means self-denial where it's like, oh, I think working out three hours tonight would be best for me, but I'm going to deny myself. And I'm going to do something for my family or for others or for the That's, Lord. Right. Jackie, jump so in true. here. I just wanted to say to Presley's come, um, actually, Rachel, you brought up Facebook, putting up the memories. How, how do you feel when you see memories of your old statuses? Because when I read stuff that I wrote <laughs> 10 mm. years ago, I am embarrassed <laughs> that I ever wrote oh, something yeah. like that. So oh, it, oh, there yeah. may be like, that may be a good tactic to be like, Hey, Maybe I feel like I looked better, but I need to remember what I was thinking yeah, at those good. times, right? And it's that sense of like false salvation, like the biggest loser before and after, like, oh, if I could just get back to that, then I'll be, everything will be fine. But do you really want to go back to like your high school self, your college <laughs> self? I mean, I hope oh, find right. some old journals <laughs> right. and read through oh, your old good. journals and that'll help. <laughs> that's so yes. good. That's so good. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, we need to change. We need to grow. And yeah, your outside is going to change and grow just like your inside. And that's normal. I mean, we don't condemn the six-year-old for like growing out of the size 6X and needing the size, you know, 7, 8, right? Like that. No, of course. Like you're like, yeah, you're on to the next size. And yet we think, oh, well, once you reach 25, you should stay there forever. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. Yes. It's not reality. Okay. Closing thoughts here really quickly. Just like one super practical thing, maybe if you have it, super practical thing you have done to stop comparison in your life. Who wants to go first? And go ahead, Jackie. Uh, I I created a new Instagram account. <laughs> um, I just... I, especially with mom, I, I have, I, in my old account was following so many mom influencers and every day I would open it up and see some mom like cutting shapes into her kids' lunches. And I'd be like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm the worst. And I, I, I caught myself and I was like, this is not healthy. And, you know, either do a clean of what's in your feed, or I just went ahead and made a whole new account. Awesome. And I was like, I'm not going to follow anymore mom influencers unless I really screen them first and know it's not going to hurt me. Yeah, that's good. Super helpful. Who else? Mine goes back to that sentence that I say, and, and literally just taking the taking a pause, which I learned from John Eldridge. I love his app, the pause app to just transition before I know I'm about to walk into somewhere where I have a tendency to compare where I'm going to get triggered. I'll just take that literal deep breath, 
slow down and just say, Lord, I'm here to bless and not impress. And it has mm. literally, it's like, I say it's like putting Jesus glasses on. So I'm holding up the shape of a heart right now over my eye. And I'm like, these are Jesus glasses. And when I look through this, I see his perspective. And when I talk I to that. you, you are a holy creation of God. You are not my competition. You know, I have nothing that I need from you. I just want to show you Jesus's love. So I say, bless and not impress and put those Jesus glasses on. And I know that sounds cheesy, but I literally do that. And, um, I think that's helped me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I love, I love that. It. I love it. Presley. Oh, go ahead, Presley. Um, yeah. So yeah, basically just what Rachel and Jackie said. I uh, cleaned up my my social media feed a lot. If I see myself getting triggered, I instantly unfollow. And in my relationships, just putting the focus on the other person and um yeah, trying to get to know them and see them as a person through how Jesus sees them and loves them. And, and also in my Bible, in my quiet time, really trying to understand the love of God and the gospel. And I've been a Christian since like 2018. And just recently in the last couple of months, have I really understood or the Holy Spirit helping me to understand grace. So meditating on grace and just studying grace and yeah, the love of God is specifically for me. And then, and then I know what the love of God is so I can see it for other people and treat them as as such love it love it thanks press go ahead tara okay so i would say a huge thing for me has just been to stop seeing myself as just an image so i just stop looking in the mirror stop looking at photos those are just images and saying i am more than a body and really learning that i am so deeply loved as a person and getting to understand that mike would what, what um, press was just saying about the grace of god getting to understand who i am in christ and stop making myself just a body. Yeah. And then I preach to myself. I preach the gospel, kind of like what Rachel was saying. I give myself, if I'm going into a hard situation, I give myself a little, a little gospel message. And I think Heather, you, you kind of touched on it. And I just wanted to end with this because it's been one of the most beautiful reminders of me. Like you said, Jesus could have chosen anybody. He was the glory, the son of God. And he chose to come down and it's in Isaiah 53 and it's verse um, two. And he said he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Yet our whole walk, like you're saying, our growth, our sanctification is to become more like him. So my job isn't to become more like him in the beauty of my appearance. It's to become more like him, in the beauty of my heart. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. That's a good word. Good word. And I'll just quickly say, I think for me, I tell myself a lot, you were made on purpose for a purpose. <laughs> Your purpose isn't being a model. Right? Like I'm not competing with Heidi Klum or anyone else. It's like, no, what's my purpose? Nope. That's not it. That's not it. Okay. God, what do you have for me to do today? So yeah. Hey, thank you all so much. I think this has been a super helpful conversation. I've loved every minute of it. I know it's going to bless some people. So thanks for doing this with me. And if it goes yeah. well, hey, let us know. Let us know what you think about this. <laughs> like drop it in the comments on YouTube or shoot us an email. Like let us know what you thought about this because we can do it again. I, I think maybe these what people... like to hear. Right? Yeah. Again. yeah. 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 Shoot us some topics. Yeah. We're, we're open. We so, <laughs> but thank you for um, being here team. And thank you for watching or listening today. I hope something today has helped you stop comparing and start living. Bye-bye.